everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to set up a quarantine tank. It's been a very, very long time since I had to use my quarantine tank. I haven't purchased the fish in a very, very long time. However, I just recently went to Reefa Palooza, purchased a couple of new fish, brought them home, and had to utilize that quarantine tank that's been sitting in the spare room for over a year now. So I wanna do a video on it and go over what a quarantine tank is and why I think it's very important to use one. As most of you know, this channel is geared towards those individuals who are new to the hobby or are just getting into the hobby. So I wanna lay down the basics of a quarantine tank and then we'll get into how to build one. The size of the quarantine tank that you plan to purchase is dependent on how many fish you plan to introduce at one time or how large of a fish you plan to introduce at one time. This is a debatable issue as in most things in this hobby are. However, I found that a 10 gallon fish tank for my use was good enough for a quarantine tank. Another debatable issue is whether or not a quarantine tank is even beneficial for new arriving fish. Some will argue that a quarantine tank itself will cause the fish even more stress because you're moving the fish from the LFS to a quarantine, leaving it in the quarantine, and then again moving it into the display tank. My advice is to absolutely quarantine any new arriving fish that you have. That's based on my experience. That's based on some of the research that I've done and the people who I've talked to in this hobby. You want to see a very upset reefer, you meet one that has purchased a brand new fish, introduced it directly into the display tank, only to have its entire display livestock infected with either ick or another parasite or an illness and just shutting down that whole tank because they didn't use a quarantine tank. Having said that, nothing in this hobby is bulletproof. In other words, just because you did the right thing by quarantining a new arriving fish for 30 days and then putting them into the display tank, it doesn't mean that that fish is not gonna come down with some kind of parasite or illness. However, think about how much you've dramatically reduced the possibilities of that happening because you did quarantine the fish for 30 days and observed it until you felt comfortable enough to put it in your display tank. So the main purpose of a quarantine tank is to have an area where you can isolate new arriving fish for a period of up to 30 days to ensure that the fish is not sick is not carrying any parasites, will take the food that you have on hand. It also provides an environment that is arguably less stressful for the fish that has just journeyed potentially from the ocean to the wholesaler, to your local fish store, and then into your home, and is now in a quarantine area by itself and is able to kind of de-stress from its travels. And additionally, once the quarantine tank has been used up, in other words, once you have no further need to purchase any more fish. You keep that quarantine tank on hand in the event that any of your fish in your display tank later down the line start showing unfavorable symptoms. You can remove that fish and place it back in the quarantine tank slash hospital tank and treat that fish appropriately. So what ended up happening to me is I came back from Reef of Palooza with my two brand new fish, acclimated them, put display water in the quarantine, went to bed, woke up the next day, and found that the 10 gallon quarantine tank was now only holding five gallons of water. I looked, there was water on the floor, couldn't figure out what was going on, looked at the back of the tank, and there I could clearly see that the water was dripping out of the back of the glass where there was a crack. I must have hit the tank during the past year and a half or something and cracked the back of the glass unknowingly. So I ended up going to PetSmart or Petco, one of those places, purchased another bare 10 gallon tank for about $15 and took it home and started prepping it. I believe it was 915 Mang that I saw do this, but I placed a piece of cardboard underneath the fish tank for the leak test. That way, if any water made contact with the cardboard itself, it'd be very obvious. I left it like this overnight, woke up the next day and determined the tank had no leaks. Once I've emptied out all the water, I started prepping the tank for paint. And in this application, I used an acrylic paint from Michael Supplies. I painted it on with a foam brush. And then once that dried up, I finished it off with Crayolon spray paint black as well. I think I used a gloss black to give it a gloss finish. This was the first time I actually used a foam brush to apply acrylic paint to glass surface. I was pretty impressed with the results. It was very easy to do. The prep work isn't as intense as if you were going to use a spray paint. It has no odor to it, so you can do this indoors. And also, 
if you have a tank that's large, you don't want to move it from inside to outside to paint it, I would suggest that you look into an acrylic paint like this. This one was made by Michaels or sold by Michaels Supplies. It's much easier to, to use and again, much easier to control where that paint goes, the dripping and all that stuff versus a spray paint. The glass could have used another one or two coats of the acrylic paint. I just got a little anxious, so I busted out the Crayolon uh, spray paint and finished it off that way and gave it a glossy black finish. You may have noticed that the quarantine tank with the crack in the back of it had only the back of the glass painted black, whereas this new one has the glass painted black on the bottom, both ends and on the back. So the only piece of glass that was not painted was the front of the glass where I can view the fish. The reason I painted all those pieces of glass black is because we want to keep the stress level of the fish in isolation to the bare minimum. Some of these fish, especially those who, which are aggressive towards its own kind, will see its reflection in the glass and become more stressed out as it thinks that a species of its own kind is in it, uh, whereas where the glass is now painted black, it can't see its reflection. I'd discourage anybody from putting sand in the quarantine or live rock in your quarantine tank. The reason I discourage it is we'll take a most common type of parasite that you would need a quarantine tank to treat a sick fish for, and that's ick. So say you have a sick fish with ick in the quarantine tank and you need a dose copper in there, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make a number up right now, I'm making this up. Let's say it calls for five milliliters of copper for five gallons of water and you dose the tank with the copper, what happens is the copper gets soaked into the sand and soaked into the rock, and what you end up with is maybe you've dosed two milliliters of copper because the rest of it has been soaked into the rock and the sand, and in the meantime, your fish that it's in need of treatment is not getting it, and the ick may become worse because it doesn't have the right amount of copper in the water column itself. I would recommend that you keep these quarantine tanks super simple, no sand, keep it bare bottom, uh, no live rock. If you do use any live sand or rock or any type of equipment, including a fish net in water that's been treated with copper, do not put that stuff back in the display tank. It will leach that copper into your display tank, immediately kill off your inverts and do harm to Okay, and finally, I want to go over the equipment that I use for my quarantine tank. First off, I have this top fin air pump that I have connected to the sponge filter, the sponge filter that I took out of the sump. So that filter is acting as a host for beneficial bacteria, as well as a filtration system for the quarantine tank. I have a basic magnetic glass cleaner for the front of the glass. I have a Seacam ammonia alert disc. You can see in the middle, it has the... Uh, color where it can change to a certain color if the ammonia level starts to increase in the tank, thus alerting me of ammonia being present there. I have a unknown named heater, just a cheap little heater that I got for the quarantine tank. I have a MaxiJet 1200 pump that I have in the tank that I'm not using, but I can turn it on if I need to circulate some water and get some detritus off the bottom of the tank. I have a four inch PVC fittings in the tank and the PVC is pretty important because uh, fish that are stressed out are going to want to have hiding places so make sure you get PVC that's large enough for the fish that you're getting to be able to go inside and hide. I have a thermometer here, the sponge filter that you saw me taking out of the sump. I have a hood the hood is important because especially if you have fish that are jumpers, you want to prevent them from leaping out of the quarantine tank. So you want to make sure you have some kind of hood or netting on top of the quarantine to keep your fish nice and safe in the water. The lights are important, but not important for the fish's health. They're important so that you'll be able to have a light to inspect the fish when they're in quarantine to make sure that you could see that they have no parasites on their body and to make sure that their health is up to par. So that's really the only reason you need lights. I have this pretty neat hang on the back filter. It's a PF15. I did a video of this filter. If you'd like to see the video, the link will be down in the description below. But the filter is a three-in-one. It filters water, it skims the water, and it also has a little UV light 
built inside the filter. I've only used it a handful of times just when I'm quarantine fish, so I can't really give you an awesome review about this particular filter, but I thought it was pretty neat, so I went out and got it uh, when I first started introducing fish into the quarantine system. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscription button. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.